Greetings, mind crafters, and welcome to another, what I hope to be an exciting discussion today. Uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I'm super pumped to be filming in my living room because there's a lovely rain coming down that's super peaceful and contemplative, um, though not camera friendly. So we are in here, and uh, I'm just super excited to talk about cultivating your own gardens. This is a metaphor. I am anything but a gardener in reality, although I do have a, I sort of found my niche with bonsai trees and they're, they're over that way. I'll have to do another film so you can kind of see them because uh, my husband makes jokes actually about each summer I keep trying. It's like that definition of insanity, right? With a garden. And he calls it the $500 tomato because like all the fertilized stuff that goes into it. And I keep trying, but anyway, not the point of today. So the metaphor is this is gardening season and it's great. So we're talking about us and, and tending to our own garden because we are the we are the gardeners of our own garden. Similar to when I talk about staying within your frame. And so when we get wrapped up in, uh, you know, can being concerned about other people's gardens, it takes us away from our own purpose and that one unique thing that we were meant to do on this earth. I even made a bunch of notes because, okay, when we get distracted, when we get pulled into other people's gardens, right? This is obviously nothing more than seduction by the ego. And we've talked about this a bunch in different episodes. There's the authentic self, and we're talking about that being within our frame. Today we're talking about it being within our garden, though it's a little different twist. And so we have the authentic self, and then the evil twin of the authentic self is the ego. When we find ourselves wrapped up in other people's gardens and what they're doing, uh, that's just that's just us being pulled away from being, you know, the gardener of our own, you know, gardens and all the vegetation, all that growth, symbolic for all the growth and all the fulfillment, all the joy, all the happiness, all that. We get pulled out of that into their stuff, right? Which is, you know, like getting pulled into all their drama and stuff. Also, when we get involved in other people's gardens, we often let their behavior get to us, right? We let their behavior get to us. When we let other people's behavior and opinions, opinions are behavior too, but a little different. We're talking about actions versus verbiage, right? When we let other people's behavior and opinions get to us, we are basically, if I had a platter, I'd use it right now, pretend. It's basically handing over our power, right? The control over our lives to someone else. He, like on this gorgeous Italian china, like, here you go. So that's what happened. We got to really not do that. And I realize it can be easier to say than to do, but practice, like whenever, anything we practice, we get better at, right? Practicing not letting other people, when they bring contrast to our lives, not letting that get to us, right? There are people, we're all moving around there, out in the world, you know, you know, creating results and different things. And those people are on their own trajectory. And we just have to do our very best not to take it personally and not to be attached to it or to the point that it affects uh, that it affects us. Because when we do so, let's say it's an opinion, when we do so and let, you know, let them all get involved in our lives, most of the time they don't even know we're letting them get to us, right? Basically, it's saying whatever you think of me is more important than what I think of me, which is self-abandonment. We talked about that a few episodes back. And when we let their, the contrast get to us, this doesn't go anywhere good either. And it can be a tough sell when you're in it. Uh, but here's the thing, we've talked about this contrast thing. It's not fun when you're in it, when you're in the mud, right? In reality though, when we look back at our lives, the dots all connect, which is why it's really important to trust the process because as we move forward, the dots, the dots will continue to, to connect, right? When we're in the mud, it's hard to see. The back, you know, when we look back, it all happened for a reason, right? So when these people are bringing contrast into our lives, we're not saying it gives them a pass for malicious behavior, right? However, it's all part of the growth process. When we look at it that way, they're all, all that behavior is kind of part of the story and just to not be attached to it, that's the big thing. It's super Buddhist, um, though it works really, really well. It, and again, it doesn't mean giving people a pass, it means detaching, not taking it personally, not letting it drag us down. It's just so incredibly important because we don't want to let other people's behavior be the boss of us, right? We wanna take that control back, bring it, get back into your own garden, get back into your own frame. Um, 
Oh, what was I saying? Yeah, because I also was saying the captains of our own ships. We're all the captains of our own ships, gardeners of our own gardens, artists of our own canvas, of our own lives. We don't want to be giving someone else the paintbrush. Same kind of thing. Okay, the other thing is, oh, and then I wanted to say, when you feel it, when we feel ourselves start to get pulled in that direction, or being yanked out of our own garden and getting into caught up in other people's drama and letting their and their drama affect us and all that stuff, this is a great check-in point. Like, what am I doing? Okay, and it's in, it's kind of like when we're on the authentic, you know, Minecraft path. We're on this journey to of, of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. Once that switch is turned on and we're aware of our authentic self and she or he or they are pulled from, you know, from the trunk or the back seat or the driver's seat back into, or, or sorry, the passenger seat, passenger seat, back into the driver's seat, okay? That switch can't be turned off. Even if the authentic self kind of, you start to get off track, out of alignment, once that switch is turned on, you become very aware of your alignment and that you're out of alignment. So, so it's really important to have a check in. I do this with myself. When this happens, like, whoa, 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 brakes, put the brakes on. Why was I pulled to do that whatever, whatever that people pleasing thing was? Like, I'm, I'm past that. Like, what, what was up with that? What, what was going on inside me that I had a little insecure moment? I felt like I had to like throw up compliments all over this person I don't like, which actually I don't do anymore at this life stage very much. I shouldn't say that. It catch, I catch myself sometimes. I wouldn't say crazy like that, but I catch myself and actually recently, I'm trying to think of when it was. Recently, I had a moment like that. I'm like, oh my God, you feel like you're so passive. And that's ego, right? Because none of us are beneath it. None of us are beneath it. And I was aware of that too. So I was like, what's up with the ego sliding, trying to slide into the driver's seat? Go away. I don't need that person's approval for any reason. Again, I don't care if it's a boss. Because we can, I was saying this in the last episode a little bit. We don't, we don't want to ever get in that place. Because even if it's a boss or somebody perceived to be up here, because we can do our best at our jobs, we can give it our, you know, 110%, you can do all that stuff. We still want to separate ourselves from, if you're giving your best, that's all you need to know. We don't have to people please anybody, no matter how high they are. It just doesn't, we just don't need to do that. Okay, so then there's the other thing um, about the garden analogy, which is really, really good, right? Because we talked about all the, the behavior stuff and not letting other people, not letting other people's behavior and opinions, may, you know, control us. That's the first part of this. The second part of this is to weed the garden. We know what happens when we don't weed a garden, right? When we don't weed a garden, the weeds, you know, and, and suck the oxygen and the, whatever's in the soil nutrients away from the plants that we want to keep, the stuff that's bearing fruit and nourishing us. Well, that's not different than the, from the weeds in our lives. I just have to tell you that there are, we have, we've got weeds in our lives and some are like, you know, like the Boston stranglers, you know, that you come in your garden, those, those viney things that just, so they're over here. And then there's the other weeds that just like kind of pop up and just, you know, take the nourishment on the whole scale of that, pull the weeds. We, so this is the thing I really give thought, um, it, you know, to, to, uh, similar to, I guess, when we talked a long time ago about the, the life minute budget or the giving a shit budget, also pretty much the same thing. For the weeds in our lives, we want to really be thinking about that because as far as we know, we only have so much, so many life, so many life minutes, you know, in this go around on this wonderful planet we are, we are residing on in this wonderful journey. So you want to be really careful about, you know, uh, the life minutes you're giving to uh, the weeds because really they should be pulled and extracted and, you know, uh, removed basically for all intents and purposes. And so, uh, yeah, we want to weed because we don't want, we don't want those, and there's a whole scale of this, right? There's the toxics and those you just yank out and throw away, especially if you're doing a brush fire, which you're not supposed to do because I think it's not, well, it's not environmentally cool and I think it's illegal, but let's just theoretically say, those weeds, you just want to like get rid, just remove entirely because they're just toxic. Um, but other weeds that are uh, not as strangly as that, they might just, um, as far as the people in your lives that are weeds, just give them less attention. You got to really weigh that stuff out because we don't want, we don't want the weeds to, to, it's all about, it's all about personal growth, right? So if somebody's, 
not bringing you growth and joy and all that, then it's time to spend less time with that person. And if they're absolutely toxic, again, then they just get yanked. Okay, so this was about cultivating your own garden. And what else did I say here? I think that was pretty much it. We don't want to be outcome-based. And when we are in other people's business and we're allowing their business to affect us, it goes both ways, then we are attaching to that stuff and we're not going to be happy. We talked about this as the last thing. We, we talked about that with the whole frame thing because when we get into other people's business and we care about what they think of us, we are putting our needs outside of our authentic frame, outside of our own garden. And when, and when we have our needs out here, that means in order to be happy, we have to have all these boxes checked. They have to like me, they have to approve of me, they have to come to my thing, I gotta go to their thing. And all those boxes have to be checked that are outside of us. And that means that our happiness is, is based on out here. We don't want that. In our own garden or in our own frame, we want our needs in here where we can be responsible for our own happiness, our own joy, our own fulfillment, our own meaning and purpose and living our very best life. So take really great care of your garden. Don't care about other people's gardens and make sure to weed it. it is, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from my living room on this beautiful rainy day. Have a mindful one.